When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Age of Radio. There you go. Okay, and now I'm off mute. Hey, welcome oh. back. Hey. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my wife was just showing me that uh, apparently Cypress Hill is performing with uh, the London Symphony Orchestra. I, I saw and, that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Another Simpsons did it. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't they predict like great things? Not to... <laughs> Maybe they have, and we just don't remember because we only Maybe. remember the bad stuff. Well, I mean, also Cyrus Hill performing with the London Symphony Orchestra is pretty cool. So it is a good thing they predicted. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, so that's the debate that's happening. Like, uh, is Cyrus Hill doing it because of the Simpsons? Joke? Of course, oh. of course. Yeah. yeah. Like, what else are they going to do? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but that is one of the, like, I won't lie, that's one of my favorite jokes from The Simpsons. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of like that. It blows up my pig. No, then Cypress Hill steals my orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like the idea that, that someone, I imagine it was maybe like someone at the Lennon Symphony Orchestra who, like, in like a, development meeting or something where it's like how can we get more people to come yeah and they were just like hey what about remember the simpsons joke and they're like all right let's let's see if we can get in touch with cypress hill and like maybe cypress hill is not even aware of the simpsons joke oh the way or do they're actually in it right they voice yeah they're actually oh, yeah, yeah. in it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah so like, cypress oh, yeah, well, hill is sitting around getting high going man we're not a thing anymore let's call the london symphony symphony orchestra real quick <laughs> see what they're up to <laughs> either way either like, way i like how it. did we become relevant we've been doing like video game scores you know in concerts and stuff like that our tenure in vegas is up <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> i really like to believe that did they have a residency in vegas that seems i have like... no idea oh, right. whenever i haven't heard from somebody from a yeah. decade though yeah i assume they've just been in vegas <laughs> if we're talking about cypress hill it's not like one of the strip casinos it's like the texas station or one of those like the the northeast quadrant or yeah. Summerlin or something. They uh, they weren't Vegas, babe. They were in Reno. Oh, mm, there we go. Or Prim. They're playing in Prim. Oh, sweet, sweet Prim. Well, God damn it, Prim's a town now. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, we just drove through it a couple months ago. And I was oh. like, oh shit. <laughs> there's there's like not just gas stations and casinos right? here. <laughs> and Pahrump has like a legit turnoff. Like, what is happening to Nevada? <laughs> Is that a roller coaster? Yeah. Like in my lifetime, they went from no speed limits to now pr- prim as a town. One of these days we'll take that Zizix Road exit and oh, we don't want to do be that. quietly we don't surprised do by the that's how you end up on a horror movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> the, that is where the hills have eyes, my friend. <laughs> God, that would be a great A24 horror. It's just Zizix Road. There so oh. so Mr. Tanner. Yes. There is a movie called Zizix Road. Oh. And it has the uh, the notoriety of being the lowest the, the grossing, theater, yeah, lowest grossing released the, movie of all time release. because wow. it grossed like eighteen dollars, and two of those people asked for a refund, and it stars Catherine Heigl. That's all I really know about it. Oh, it's called Zizix Road. That's rough. That is. Yeah. A, it's a rough go around. <laughs> what are we gonna do it on the podcast? Yeah, right. We, oh fuck! I gotta see. Wait, let me see if it's streaming anywhere. That's is that something we're gonna have to purchase? I remember that was the <laughs> the problem before. Is everybody's like, yeah, this movie exists, but nobody can find it. Let's see, Zizix. Beer vinegar. Two thousand six. Zizix Road doesn't appear to be streaming. Let me check like YouTube here. 
maybe it's gone the way of uh fucking honeymoon in vegas or whatever. yeah yeah sorry sorry about that man i swear it was streaming it was I t- they robbed us oh, of but it appa- but apparently zig's road is a thriller so oh nice <gasps> shit i think it's, it looks like it's on youtube oh shit <laughs> you cut that cut that cut that <laughs> someone will someone will take it off <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah like, like i tried to find honeymoon in vegas on youtube and it's listed but then i tried to watch it and they're like mgm has uh made a copyright claim on this video i was like god damn it damn it <laughs> damn it MGM, so, you're not supposed to remember this should be free <laughs> sons of bitches you're charging me so much <laughs> in october when i'm coming and stay at your place just <laughs> stick it out of there yeah. but you know we bought it for 15 bucks so we have yeah, it forever now it whenever you want until yeah. they take it off <laughs> i mean yeah until amazon dies which you know yeah. tiktok but <laughs> and then i'll lose all my other incredible purchases i have on there like uh steel dawn uh, mad uh, max 2. yeah mad max uh. 2 the the wicker man the good one <laughs> no, <I'm scared. laughs> they're both good but uh nick cage is definitely the better one yeah uh, more stuff happens oh absolutely but the original is a secret musical which i appreciate it, that's exactly it <laughs> I, I always wait for Nick Cage to break out in a song about the coal miner's <laughs> daughter or whatever, and it's like, oh, that's right, it's the other one. He's not Chris, uh, Christopher Lee. <laughs> She was young, beautiful, and married, but she was not desired. I want you like we used to want. She had everything, but she was not fulfilled. God, it has nothing to do with you. Until a stranger entered her life. I know what you really are. I make no excuses for what I do. And swept her into a world of insatiable passion. I want you to move in with me. No. I could kill him. You have a mistress, don't you? And sensational film newcomer Erica Anderson. Keep a careful what you want. You might just get it. Joe! Sandalini. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Steve. And I'm Izzy. And this is Everything I Learned from Movies. And tonight! Oh, tonight. Uh, we are continuing Nick August Cage. Nick August Cage. With 1991's Zandali. Because it's the most it's wonderful, wonderful time of the year. <laughs> Catch me. But babe, we're not alone for this one. We're not? I know you're I know you're incredibly sorry, shocked. What? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, originally we were gonna watch another movie with this man, but uh, you know, things being what they are, we have the one, the only Michael Tanner from the Grand Bid Podcast and others. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I am ecstatic to be on this episode. I was happy to be on when we were going to do Honeymoon in Vegas, but I am especially excited uh, to be on now that we've watched Zandali. Yeah, you were super excited when when I was like, oh yeah, this seems to be on Tubi. You want to do that? Yes. Yes, of course. I'm like, oh, oh, it must be good. All right. (laughs) I'd never seen this before. So this Uh, movie, like uh, I, I saw this movie quite a bit. Uh, at the time because i i assume it just played on skin and max over and over again I, I was gonna ask how how 12 years old were you and uh do you remember your first time watching it yeah <laughs> you, you know i you know you always remember your first time unless <laughs> you watched it so many times that all those times just blended together nice <laughs> I, 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 we'll get into it i watched this movie and i immediately uh text my friend kalisha who lives in new orleans and i'm like look mm-hmm. it is an artist yeah it is an artist has a thing about nick cage and johnny depp and all that and i'm like this movie was made for you you oh, need to watch it tonight greasy dirty <laughs> new orleans like, <laughs> weird accent nicholas cage yeah. this is a- southern artist nicholas cage like johnny depp with a mullet yes please yeah. So, erotic thriller you say so i guess a little bit of a spoiler but um 
<laughs> Steve and I were talking about like I don't usually like these kinds of movies. This I like that this movie gets like two full extra stars simply being in New Orleans. Oh yeah. Oh just greasy and ugh. anyway. Yeah. Um before before we get into this, babe. Steve. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. Michael, uh, do you have something you'd like to promote before we uh, start kicking things off? Ooh, is it is it why? the return of Burn After Pitching? Or? Oh, you know what? I am waiting. Um, uh, I keep <laughs> trying to get Burn After Pitching like in the, the um, convention circuit. And uh, like it's hit or miss. Like I've done it at a couple conventions. I think if I can get it back regularly at some comic and horror and whatever conventions where I can record the episodes, burn after pitching will return someday. Maybe not likely, uh, but fingers from, crossed. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed real things to promote uh, my graphic novel. Uh, Absolute Zeros, book one, camp launch pad is out. It's been out for a little while, but uh, it's really good. If you uh, got kids, it's a middle grade book. So it's meant for slightly younger kids. Uh, it's a summer camp, sci-fi, grounded, near future. Uh, if you liked movies like camp, or was it the, if you like movies like Heavyweights, Ernest Goes to Camp, or TV shows like Salute Your Shorts. Camp Nowhere. Camp oh, Nowhere. Yeah. Uh, this is up your your wheelhouse, so buy it for your kids because all of you are in your like 40s now. Um, but that's <laughs> Absolute Zeros, Camp Launchpad, Book One. Your finer bookstores should still have it, but you can also order it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or um, yeah, those are the main places. I'm not even going to be like, oh, so support your small indie bookstore. Uh, I mean, do that, obviously, do that, but they'll have to special order it for you. Uh, if you want to just walk in and get it, go to your Barnes and Noble, they'll have yeah. it. There you go. Or you could always uh, just hit Michael up directly. He'll uh, he'll get oh you. Oh my god! I have stock. Yeah. Yeah. Email me. Uh, visit my. I don't even have a website anymore. Like these last few years are <laughs> rough, man. Uh, find me on um, Blue Sky. Is anyone still using Blue Sky? Remember we call that? it Blue Ski, but yes, no, ski. <laughs> Blue Ski. Uh, find me on Blue Ski. I might log into that again. I haven't logged in in two months, but uh, I remember it's a replacement for uh, Shitter. So uh that's the thing i'm not i'm not on i'm not on x formerly known as twitter uh, but on Twitter Facebook is man. pretty much logged locked down uh so yeah man just like google me um <laughs> yeah. I, i'm not the, i'm me. not He'll the guy who writes somewhere. about Nietzsche. uh <laughs> that guy steals all of my google analytics god damn him um but yeah go look it up camp launchpad absolute zeros absolute zeros book one camp launchpad is the proper title excellent Excellent. And uh, babe, uh, before we get into this, though, I, oh, yes. I don't know about you. <gasps> I'm a little thirsty. Oh, well, I'm still quite sober. Well, because we are celebrating the most wonderful time of the year, Nick August oh, Cage. So it's the time of the year. That's the one from Wasatch Brewery. We have Ghost Rider IPA. <laughs> That's right. The India Pale Ale Brewed with Coriander. This one does not make you piss fire. That would be Ghost Rider, too. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was the second one. That's right. <laughs> Ghost Is Rider it only the second one where he pisses fire? Yep. Yeah. Ghost Rider 2, Spirit of Vengeance. I was trying to remember, like, wait, that was at a construction. Yeah, that was the second one. That was yeah. the second one. I don't remember many things, but I remember that very distinctly. <laughs> but uh, Ghost Rider roams the high desert searching for the thief of their perfect IPA recipe. Take a sip and hope they don't smell the coriander, or we could be in trouble. I'm Sam Elliott. No. Uh, six point five percent alcohol by volume. Not Uncle Zeb. <laughs> well, I reckon they're probably finding that coriander recipe one of these days. Because I think only Mario was going to get this reference. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, maybe Mario. Uh, yeah. Guys, how the West was won from like the seventies. Yeah, like All of it's on to be. Holy cow! It is an amazing way to waste like twenty hours. Absolutely spectacular. <laughs> and Zebulon McCahan is one of the greatest Western heroes you've never heard of. Right. A.K.A. Uncle Zeb. That's right. That's uh, a name. Matop. Oh, his top. Nice. And the poor. Ah, uh, beautiful light straw-colored beer. White foamy head. Lots of tiny bubbles are dissipating quickly. Tiny bubbles dissipating quickly. Yes, oh, we get a little pine on that. Can we name our first son Zebulon? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Zebulon McCain Condor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like it. it's got a ring to it. Not, Zeb not Zebulon Eagles Condor. Mm -hmm. 
I was trying to think. Uh, Zebulon, Monroe, <laughs> Monroe <laughs> Kelly, no. Her- Herkimer, <laughs> Herkimer, Battle Cruiser, <laughs> Zebulon, Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh, but yeah, yeah, nice <laughs> little pine. <laughs> The, um, the coriander like really balances well with the pine and like accentuates it without making it taste like paint thinner. Yeah, yeah br- brightens it up a little bit. It gives a little, uh, little kind of a citrusy note and stuff yeah, here. Very fresh. Maybe this is good bit. for summer. Yeah. Uh, by, th- by the way, do you prefer Mike or Michael? I know I, it's always I Tanner on the right bin. But yeah, that's just because like that son of a bitch would. Um, yeah, so many Mikes. I literally have no preference over Mike or Michael. Like it kind of weirds people out and they think it's just being submissive, but literally I have no preference. Excellent. Like, well, I get Zebulon, do you have uh, something you're drinking on your end? Or? Yeah, uh, I'm drinking. Oh, check this out. I am drinking a, um, a multiple refilled bottle of Dasani uh, that's just been refilled multiple times with tap water. So that's what I'm imbibing for this hot and sweaty episode yeah oh you gotta stay hydrated down there in the bayou i feel like oh. refilling a bottle of the sauna is like one of the most new orleans things you can probably <laughs> it do really is. i'm a rebel <laughs> the other thing is uh t- topping off by just putting your cocktail in a smoothie king cup oh so yeah you, so you take it into museums oh, i mean god what bless, god bless you smoothie king who may have saved my husband's life on multiple occasions yeah you and your hydration smoothie <laughs> We you found do. out while in New Orleans, not only do we imbibe too much alcohol, of course, what? <laughs> but Steve is wildly allergic to hurricanes. And what turns into drunken night, maybe a little bit of puking and then passing out, becomes like six solid hours of puking and full body rashes. Oh, yeah. That is, um, <laughs> erotic that's thriller, horrific. you might say. <laughs> <laughs> No hurricanes for you. Yeah, I'm okay with that. There's there's plenty of other things to drink there. I mean, you had what, like six that night? <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think it is in the hurricanes? Uh, we've uh, kind of narrowed it down rum, to maybe, dark rum. But, which... but oh. like regular rum is just fine. So yeah, white rum, he's know. fine with spice rum. He's fine with dark rum, though. He's regularly gotten, and like I said, like it's an allergic reaction. Like he, he gets like a body rash and it gets weird. Um, but there's nothing sure. that we can find in dark rum that like it's just aged more than white rum. Yeah, huh. yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Yeah, that's fascinating. But, uh, but on that note, 1991's Zandali. Zandali. <laughs> uh, from director Sam Pillsbury. Who's he? See? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, babe, he's he's the director of Birth. 1977, mm. not the 2004 one we just talked about with, actually, with Mike Wood from the Grand Band. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what that one's about, the 77 one's about, but you follow that up with Starlight Hotel, this, Into the Badlands, Knight Rider 2010. I think it was Knight Rider 2000. Was that the one we saw on Netflix that was like the the TV movie from like 2000 or something? Maybe. Late 99 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, free, free Willy three colon the rescue, mm-hmm. fifteen and pregnant, uh, where the red fern grows, the two thousand three edition. Yes, that oh. is the one starring Dave Matthews, Ned Beatty, Chris Christopherson, and Dabney Coleman. Oh my! Wow, yeah. a regular murderer's row of uh, top notch TV talent. Yep, I tell you who the kid was, but yeah, I like that was like the only thing he did. Uh, and two thousand nine's endless bummer. There you go. Oh, but oh it was like, that's a National Lampoon movie, right? And I was like, yep. 100%. Oh, yeah, it's got to <laughs> American Pie Presents Endless Bummer yeah. or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but written by Mary Kornhauser. Who are they? I don't know. But they started off their career with this. Followed it up with FTW, which is a Mickey Rourke movie from a few years after. Uh, 2000's Housebound, which they also directed with uh basically peter skarsgård plays someone who's uh running out an apartment but may also be a serial killer so there we go all right and two episodes of treme i'm gonna take a wild guess uh marie mary kornhauser is a resident of new orleans yeah I, that seems pretty safe yeah, yeah. i wonder if they're uh, like uh they kind of got the hbo gig 
um, maybe as like a pity job, like it's a horrible to say someone I don't know, but maybe as a pity job, like maybe they are a fixture of like the indie film community in New Orleans. Oh yeah, maybe and they're yeah. like, oh yeah, like you're kind of an elder states person. Um, here, write these episodes. Get keep your WGA health insurance. Yeah, how how would somebody uh, get this plot a point across? You 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 can write a few scenes. Yeah, yeah. Here you, yeah. Go. you need a SAG card, right? Yeah. <laughs> But of course, starring in this movie, not a star in the sky for they're all in this movie. Of course, Sir Nicholas Cage as Johnny Collins. Judge Judge Reinhold as Terry Martin. Um, and the one I had to look up, Erica Anderson as Zandalee Martin. Who's she? Uh, you may know her as Greta from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, The G- Dream Child. I think that's the fifth one. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, she's also, yeah. Is that right? Okay, cool. Uh, and then uh, she was Jade in three episodes of Twin Peaks. This. And then she was in episodes of like Dream On, Red Shoe Diaries, Silk Stockings. I mean, she's pretty. Yes, yeah. she is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but also starring in this movie. Holy shit, you guys. The cameos are amazing. You have Joey Pantliano as Jerry. Yeah. Aaron Neville as Jack. Woo! that one Steve. cracked me up when i saw yeah. it in the in the cast list because i was like aaron aaron neville <laughs> what the what the fuck is aaron neville gonna do in this movie and he's I a mean, bartender okay it's probably his bar like he lives there like yeah. <laughs> right. it's just his day job yeah <laughs> he needed a place to film at noon on a tuesday anytime he sees a film crew he's like y'all got a part <laughs> most people like asking for a dollar like yo yo <laughs> Uh, Steve Buscemi as the OPP man in the credits. All right. <laughs> Who is, like, is anyone in this movie more convincing as a New Orleans resident than Steve Buscemi no. right in that dump truck? No, absolutely. I'm pretty sure he's from like Lafayette or something. Like, <laughs> I mean, this is just like, I'm like, yep, yep. This is like the most convincing role I've ever seen Steve Buscemi in in my life. <laughs> mm. And then uh, Marissa Tomei for a cup of coffee as Remy. Yeah. She and uh, babe. one scene and then some uh, voiceover work. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, uh, my cousin Vinny hadn't hit quite yet. So, <laughs> but babe, I did look it up. Zach Galligan as Raj. Who's he? Yes. The kid from Gremlins shows up he? for a cup of coffee. <laughs> I was looking at it like, wait, is that the guy from like uh, Gremlins and Waxwork, but with a beard? <laughs> yeah, sure was. Uh so so Mike, how'd you watch this one? Uh this time? Yeah. I watched this on Tubi for free yeah. with commercials. And do note, one of the commercial breaks was entirely dedicated to Blue Chew. Oh they know who's watching this movie. They know <laughs> yeah. middle-aged men with erectile problems. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they're still in your Google Analytics, you don't even know. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, we get oh god, we get a lot of like uh car commercials, insurance, like uh, apparently they, they think we're accident prone or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> TV's TV's got a weird uh maybe maybe it's because we're watching all the uh how the West was one and stuff, so they think we're like 70 years old and just need a bunch of life insurance, but, <laughs> but uh, I will say it was weird that it was normally my Tubi experience is very similar. It's like you know, insurance cars whatnots this was the only it was the only time it was a blue chew ad and then it just reverted back to normal so i'm just like wow this is um, very targeted they're like hmm and get your blue chew and then you know which once, once you're finished think about car insurance and then enjoy yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah so we uh we show up we're in new orleans we got this uh, excuse me the zydeco music plan we uh and, and then this is where the uh, the credit comes up for music by Pray for Rain. And I'm like, what? Okay. All right. All right. We're in for this the whole time. This is going to be great. And uh, uh, oh, and then while the credit for Pray for Rain comes up, it, start, it starts raining. That's right. No, it's not rain. It's gal watering her flowers. Yep. <laughs> it's lady watering her plants on her balcony there in the French Quarter. You know how it is. Uh, cut to boobs. And I'm like, yes, Tanner, you picked wisely. Yeah. <laughs> you say, what is movie? This movie, I think, has a head start for most gratuitous boobies awards, babe. 
I mean, it's definitely going to be nominated, but right. <laughs> but guys, spoilers! By the time this movie's ending, Izzy was like, "So, does she spend more time on screen naked than Matilda May does in Life Force?" And I'm like, "I mean, she's in almost every scene, so <laughs> percentage of screen, uh, per- like her percentage of screen time." Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like on screen time is naked, yeah, yeah. definitely. But <laughs> I mean, Matilda May's only like eight or nine minutes or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. number of minutes nude, 100% she wins, but percentage of screen time? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, basically, uh, she uh, comes on in, and we see Southern Judge Reinhold uh, talking on the phone about mergers or some shit. I don't know. Um, he's he's hyping himself up. Like, he's, he's shaving for the morning, and he's trying to hype right, himself yeah. up. Uh, and also, do note, um, accents are an incredibly difficult thing. Um, and... and it's especially Southern accents because there's a wide variety of Southern accents. I applaud Judge Reinhold um, and his, you know, community theater version of a, a deep Southern accent. Um, but he tries and goddamn, I appreciate that. Uh, Nicholas Cage. Uh, we'll see. Also um, valiant effort. Our lead actress. She, she kind of g- clearly gave up halfway through the movie because some <laughs> scenes she has an accent and some scenes she does not at all. Um, I- I'm sure the director was like, sweetie, just, just stop. Just, just yeah, just stop. <laughs> it's kind of like, like Kevin your Costner parents were Cajun. Okay. You, uh, you went to just like down. Kevin stop. Just, you don't need to try to do the accent. Let's just keep filming. <laughs> yeah. Judge, uh, judge Reinhold, uh, was it? And Terry, he, he does a, he does a pretty good Colonel Sanders. Like he's, uh, He's he's just a small plantation owner, kind he's of a dandy. He is Wilton in this. He <laughs> he's he's Don Johnson in uh, Django Unchained. Like oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he cuts himself shaving or whatever, and uh, he's like, ah, oh, see, I cut myself a little bit, and she goes in to like suck it, and I'm like, oh shit, she's a vampire. That's the twist. <laughs> He's like, nope, nope. I gotta go off to a Shriners convention or some shit. Cause he puts on one of those hats. Yeah, and... he puts on a fez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie like... does not like to give context for a lot of a lot of actions. <laughs> There's nothing more New Orleans than that. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we find out later. Apparently, he's going to like a bachelor party or whatever yeah. with that fez on, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's totally a thing, right? Like. Yeah, no. May, I mean, maybe in New Orleans. I don't know. I've never been to a bachelor party in New Orleans. Maybe there's a big like tiki revival fez scene there. Um, it, it's it's very strange. Yeah, we went for a honeymoon, but yeah, definitely have the, the bachelor party. I don't know. Maybe it's just how they identify themselves in crowds or whatever. Like, <laughs> oh, there's there's Johnny's over there. Hey, buddy. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, uh, the next morning we see uh, Zandalee just jogging along the French Quarter, you know, down by Jackson Square or whatever, and uh, she decides, well, I'm just going to run in front of a fucking train. Yeah. What an asshole. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Does it get her? Yes, it does. Roll credits, guys. What do we think? (laughs) No, she just misses it, and she's like huffing and puffing, like, oh, what a rush, or I don't know, I guess that's the reaction she was going for. Meanwhile, the poor conductor is just like, oh, my God, not again. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, oh, Lord, <laughs> boss is going to have me again. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I know it's like when she like jumps in front of wherever you get like one honk and then it's like nothing like, nope, never happened. <laughs> just keep on going. Don't even slow down. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and it starts to rain uh, uh, on our way back. And this is where we are first introduced to our uh, uh, prison-based garbage collectors uh, picking up the trash there in the quarter. Uh, one of them is Steve Buscemi. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> it is and, very uh, strange. First of all, I had no idea. I, like, is this a thing? Does New Orleans like have, like, is there like trash collectors prisoners? That's prison labor. Okay. Right. All right. And then it's a uh, Stevie Simi. It's like, Oh, okay. That's a friendly, familiar face. Yeah. It's just all the outer work actors they have lying around. They're like, Hey, you want to be a garbage man, throw on this prisoner uniform. Yeah, sure. But, uh, but yeah, I like how he's like, Hey, they beautiful. How's it going? <laughs> he's like, you know, he's shooting a shot. He's Steve Buscemi. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, then we go to the bachelor party and we see everybody wearing the fezes and there's strippers everywhere. And then, oh, Johnny, you're back in town. Hey, uh, uh, 
and this Cheering. is a hell of a shot, right? Yeah. Like it's a lit corridor with just Nicolas Cage in silhouette walking in and then getting called out. And then he stops and does like a, like, like a head banger, like head swirl with his long hair. Yeah. Um, and then like with, comes with his in luscious he, mullet. Yeah. This like sweet. It is like, <laughs> I don't know. Wild West gunfighter facial hair. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he you throw a hat on that guy, he's ready to throw down with Doc Holiday. Like he's but uh but yeah, he comes in like, oh man, I haven't seen you. Oh my goodness. Man, this beer. Uh I haven't seen you in forever. What are you back in town? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh you know, it's all in their like southern accents or whatever. Like excuse me, just one moment. Instantly getting a lap dance <laughs> and uh spraying cool whip on the stripper and going going into J- Chow Town and uh was it god was terry Z like well like, he always, he did, always have did have a sweet tooth sweet tooth yeah. <laughs> i'll do the cleo oh yeah so uh so then we come back to terry's apartment and uh and uh he invited johnny back to you know meet the wife and everything you know they're catching up and uh i, I don't know this, this whole interaction was just so fucking awkward because it's like oh oh i'm i'm gonna uh, we're gonna surprise Tay Tay. Uh, was it Tata? Ta- ta, you know, I, I found out it was his grandmother. I thought it was his mother or whatever. I thought first. it was his mother. Um, up until later when there's a reveal about her mm-hmm. having a boyfriend, I was like, "What is this your mom?" Like, yeah. it's it well, was it, it, it was it, it was first when she said, "Oh, I haven't had a man in years," and like, but they said later his dad died like a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, but but he's like, "Oh, go 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 hide go hide in the kitchen. I want to surprise a." And of course, so uh, Z- Zandalee's in the kitchen, you know, making a sandwich or something. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> they're like, oh, you must be the wife. Anyway. And she is, um, okay. So Nicolas Cage does look like a creepy, greasy, n- bad influence. Uh, oh, yeah. But she is like instantly hostile. And it's it's a little weird especially considering that we're supposed to like, I don't know how we're supposed to read this scene. If she is hostile to him because she's attracted to him yeah, or yeah. is she hostile because he looks like a, a, a gross, a gross man who has just looks, entered her home. It's like a gross pirate who just washed up in his yes. her kitchen. Yeah. I mean, a little bit I, after now watching the movie, I think she's just kind of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Which is such a weird, like, it's such a weird way to kind of handle your lead character. Um, I mean, it's just one of those movies where like, kind of, let's face it, nobody's really likable in this movie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And yeah. even like Nicolas Cage, I think we're supposed to like, but I don't know if it's just Nicolas Cage charisma or like flaws, like, are we supposed to like him? Are we supposed to hate him? Is he the villain? Because sometimes he does really seem like the villain. Oh, oh yeah, um, he definitely has villain and, turns. And then sometimes <laughs> he's the hero. It's this movie's complicated, and I and, and normally that's a good thing. But uh, you know what they say: complicated, complicated is the new yeah. inconsistent. So yes, we'll go with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, they eventually they all go into the you know, the dining room or the living room or whatever. They go, like, oh, yeah, me and, uh, me and Johnny, we were misfits in the past. And, uh, you know, I went to our college and he didn't. He went straight into the private sector drawn and, I don't know, living the oddest life or whatever. And then Big Daddy found out and cut him off. And now he's got to make his own way. It's this movie. No kidding, folks. Like, yeah. it's, it's so weird. Southern community theater, Southern Gothic. It's it's very endearing. Oh, and then uh, like, you're like, oh, the artist laugh. Is that what uh, the excuse is when you have money? You're no longer part of art or something like that. I don't know. Whether you're Donald Trump or whatever, I'm like, okay, movie, you can stop with that. I, yeah, I was house. just like, God damn it. <laughs> Can't get away. See, guys, he was a joke back in the 80s. What the fuck is wrong? Damn it. <laughs> yeah. But then, uh, you know, uh, Zandalee being bitches, she is. She, she was kind of like, uh, oh, you you have your models and whatnot, you know, blah, blah, blah. And of course, uh, Johnny, he's like, yeah, I have, uh, that, that nice, uh, big red snatch right in my face every once in a while. I just dive right on in. 
Yeah, I like, 100% that movie? line was improvised, right? Like, that was just Nick, Nick Cage, Nicholas Cage in his way through it. Mm-hmm. I refuse to believe that's, that line was written by a living human being. <laughs> right. <laughs> From the writer of uh, Free Rolly 3. Oh, no, it was the director. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, basically we got a little background about uh, Tyrion, you know, Judge Reinhold. Basically, his dad died like a year ago, and he's uh, I guess he's taken over uh, Southern Com, which I guess is like a radio station or yeah, it, 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 it's like a communications company, right? Because they talk about like uh, running line and like telephone lines and stuff like that too, like because because Nick Cage works for him as like a like a phone repairman or something. Right. I'm thinking this was a small regional telecommute like because he talks about later how his dad uh, like bought a radio station at 25 and then like turned it into an empire by 30 so i think it's supposed to be a thing where his father built this empire like telecommunications empire i imagine like uh like a ted turner kind of type like a regional ted ted turner who's now like you know was setting up the business to kind of move forward he dies judge reinhold has to take over because it's still technically a family business yeah yeah a little bit of nepotism in there you know how it is yeah yeah so uh so yeah so they're caught up and then uh and then we see zandalee jogging again down by jackson square and then uh holy shit is that joey pants in a dress joey pants it is. in a dress joey pants without pants <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah apparently uh Zandali and uh joey pants they they sell dresses um you know i have a little shop there in the quarter yeah and uh you know joey he's a little he's a little worried because Zandali seems a little bitchy even more bitchy than usual i guess right. so uh obviously it means she's not getting it if you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. um i'm like yeah i guess not i mean but also girl you can't take care of yourself come on yeah come on you don't need no man for that in this modern age (laughs) yeah i'm just like i mean if you have to rely on somebody else i'm judging you a little bit come on there you go now the 80s are well this is 91 the 91s were a different time you know people were less free to explore Go, go, go on mike you, you were talking about nobody jacking off in the 90s <laughs> <laughs> oh uh i mean girls the girls are different things are oh different yeah yeah girls are right? so pure the the sweet well, petals they are the the purest of uh daisies there's no way they would touch their own big red snatch as uh <laughs> johnny would say oh man I'd kind of forgotten about that line that line is too much <laughs> but uh but johnny you know he's like uh oh that's right like like uh terry uh, terry, uh i don't know the french uh, terry judge reinhold uh he's basically like hey johnny you want to draw draw a portrait of me you're always so talented yeah terry. sure so so he's drawn this portrait of uh of judge reinhold that honestly looks just like johnny like looking at it i, I don't know like the sunken eyes and everything i was like no, no, I want you to draw a portrait of me. That's how me was so. Not not you, Nicolas Cage. But yeah. Um, and yeah, the girls come home, and of course, you know they come back from bringing groceries because they have the bag with the baguette sticking out. And, Classic. Uh, and uh yeah, we start finding out that uh, you know, Terry, he was a he was a big poet back uh, you know, a couple years earlier, but ever since he got into the the family business and whatnot, he's uh he's lost his passion. He's lost his uh, he's got like writer's block or some shit and you know, things ain't uh, things ain't as prevalent as they used to be in the bedroom. You know, just kind of uh, uh, they 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 basically say like are trying to imply that it's like you know he's so distracted by work and all that stuff. But I I don't he's know. He's just under so much pressure. Yeah, but but he's also like I lost I lost my 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 poet spirit or some shit. You know. Yeah, like the way I got it was sort of that. Yeah, like he sort of conformed to the business so much he lost his lust for life. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You know, both artistically and physically. Which is, you know, a, that is a, a worthwhile theme to explore. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and let's explore this in the, um, the medium of erotic thriller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we get the first of many scenes of, uh, uh, Zan- God damn, Zanzibar. No, uh, Z- Zandali. She's going Zandali. to. 
She's going to the chapel, you know, the St. Louis Cathedral or whatever right there on Jackson Square. I assume that's her local church. Um, and, of course, whenever she goes in, it's completely empty. Just her. And maybe Johnny. We'll see later. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, we also find out that, uh, I guess, a Southern Com is being bought out by another company. And so Terry's, you know, he's becoming vice president of this new company that's buying it out. But he's also like, oh, man, it's not what it used to be. Back when it was just the radio station. We get a little bit of background, like the daddy took it from this and built it to this, and now it's and just... he never had to compromise his principles. Yeah. And your daddy is all washed up, so get with the <laughs> yeah. times. Your daddy's six feet under or above ground here in New Orleans. That's how we bury <laughs> our people. Uh, so, so that night we go to a bar, and uh, you know Zandali and Joey Pants—they're just going, having a good time at a. Yeah, it's a sex club. It's weird. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Who? Like, there's who, a lot of a lot of naked people. Yeah, dancing, guys, quote, it's, uh, guys, yeah. It's, uh, listeners, it's not a strip club. It's, oh. it's, it's a sex club. It, there's like a man and a woman on stage uh, simulating sex acts, um, and and the crowd in this bar um, just regular folk. This is not like, not like, I know that there were a couple of those, uh, naked dancers or whatever kind of spilled over into the crowd too. Like yeah. maybe there wasn't enough stage for all I mean, of them. But this just feels like <laughs> New Orleans. You remember we were going down Bourbon oh, yeah. street. There was one morning on our honeymoon, we were going down Bourbon street at like 9 AM <laughs> and your friend who was showing us around Kalisha, shout out to Kalisha, yeah. like wanted to see if one of the bars is open and we opened, she opened the door and there was like oh, yeah. a little person on a table <laughs> and a drag queen yeah. and like a stripper sit, just sitting on the bar like and they all just turned and stopped whatever they were doing and stared at us and Kalisha was like said hi to the drag queen and we left yeah <laughs> <laughs> like hey Shug, we'll be back in an hour yeah like all right <laughs> to the next bar damn i, gotta I was go just to like, new orleans and this is new orleans all right Wait, uh, michael have you been to new orleans i have not but funny oh. funnily enough my wife and I have decided like we have to take like a big vacation because we haven't really gone on one since we got our dogs. And we're like, okay, next year we're saving up. We're gonna like invest in like building a relationship with a dog sitter and we're going yes. we're going somewhere. We're going to New Orleans. So that oh, New Orleans well, if you need tips. If you need tips, I have spent months of my life in New Orleans on like nearly a dozen trips. I love that place, thought about moving there, except I mean, you you've seen the movie. So <laughs> <laughs> I will take you up on that, uh, that offer of advice. Excellent. <laughs> uh, it, 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 we were even just earlier today talking about going, <laughs> going probably next year and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so where are we? Oh yeah. So, so yeah, after the sex club or whatever, uh, we see Zandali coming home a little drunk and a little noisy, you know, bouncing off the walls a little bit. <laughs> oh, sh- sorry. I didn't mean to wake you. <laughs> Like that kind of shit. And uh <laughs> and of course I noticed when she walked in, oh, she's got a couple beads on. All right, she had some fun with that club, you know. <laughs> oh she no, she was wearing those necklaces. Like that's a nineties thing, is those long necklaces. Oh. She oh, was well, wearing I, them at the club. Oh, that was like specifically beads or whatever. Well, oh, no, no, no. They're they're like the black cubic zirconias or whatever. Uh, okay. You remember the like super long did your mom not wear the super long necklaces in the nineties? Have you met my mom? Yeah, but wasn't she single for part of the 90s? Yeah, yeah country single. <laughs> but on, but her... I don't know what that means, but I love it. I think that it means, means, that means she got, got your boots, your uh, Levi's. Yeah, she got her or... cowboy boots she needed help getting off at the end of the night. Exactly. And the uh, the Levi's that you have to use uh, the uh, needle nose pliers to zip up. That's the ones, yeah. Yep. But, uh... Yeah, so yeah, she comes home and, uh, you know, she starts getting ready for bed. So, of course, we see boobs again, because why the fuck not? It's been four minutes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> but then, uh, you know, she's trying to take her, her top off or whatever. And, uh, uh, help, it's stuck in all my big, beautiful hair. And, uh, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> she might as well have been stuck in the dishwasher because <laughs> 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 Judge Reinhold's <laughs> like, I can help you. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, uh, Apparently, the whole thing is, uh, um, <laughs> say, say my name. Yeah. Uh, t- teary. Harder. T- teary. Teary. And, but then he, like, pulls away or whatever, and it's like, oh, imp- impotency issues, I guess? Or, I-, I don't know, maybe he's a little drunk, too. I, I don't know what, but... Look, we don't I, know I, I if he's got whiskey dick, too, at this yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Like, maybe he had a rough day at work, and she just wasn't there. I am not but, giving him the benefit of a doubt. 
Yeah. He he is impotent uh, as a man right now because he feels impotent in his life. He He's feels as, as wilted as a June bug in a molasses patch. I don't even know what that means. He, like, he is bruised. He, like paraplegic like a of the soul. Yes. <laughs> As he says, in yes, the movie. and I'm like, oh shit, is that uh, this scene or is that later? Because that is oh, that's the scene. That's the yeah. scene. I'm a paraplegic of the soul. I wish you were a paraplegic for real. Yeah, <laughs> that's Please that is harsh, Zandalee. Yeah, and so then they have a an argument where they're both naked in this room for a couple of minutes, and I'm like, all right, well, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, but then uh, I, I I don't know. I, a chameleon pops up in the room like what was that oh, is yeah. a lizard oh no it's a chameleon and i'm like well that's somebody's pet because yeah, that's that, walking that, new orleans that's just from <laughs> from south america buddy but yeah he just kind of like you know nudges it out the window or whatever onto a certain death on bourbon street right <laughs> but uh but yeah next morning you know zandalee's jogging again and uh <laughs> she's like running and then all of a sudden Steve Buscemi's running the other way with a radio on his shoulder. Hey, you want to buy a radio for five bucks? Ah! That's it. The cops are right after him. On scooters. I love the cops are little little 80s Datsun or whatever scooters chasing him. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, But luckily, it's also, uh, as luck would have it, right at a little construction site where Johnny's hanging out. I was like, oh, hello there. Didn't manage to see you around here. I guess he's helping uh, lay some fiber optic cable or something for that new phone line. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, basically he ends up like, like showing off his tattoo on his arm and I don't know. And then he uh, finishes off the little conversation with, we're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Oh, okay, cool. I'm like, that's a, that's a threat, Johnny. You need to back off. <laughs> yeah. So then we're back in the apartment. And Johnny's drawing uh, the portrait again, and uh, he, he's getting. Uh, uh, that's right. He just finished it off or whatever, and he's like, "What do you think?" Uh, I mean, you definitely got talent. Uh, let me go see how it looks in the bedroom or whatever. You know, Judge Reinhold takes it in there, um, and then Tata, I don't know, went to the kitchen or some shit, and so it's just Johnny and Zandalee. So what happens, Mike? Well, Johnny decides that this weirdly misplaced sexual tension is about to erupt and he gets a little uh he he kisses her right like he this is yeah. the first like he like backs her up kiss. against the wall yeah. and kisses her basically i'm like this um is, all right <laughs> it's like you this this is a little rough i like i do have to say like watching this movie i was like yeah i view like i have a better concept of like um like what's right and what's wrong now than I did when I was 11, where I just like, Oh wow. Look what, look what, look what he's doing. He's taking charge. Takes oh, what he wants. Yep. That's a uh, lessons, lessons learned. Like that is a, uh, don't, don't do that kids. Don't be like that. Don't be like a Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be Johnny. Don't be <laughs> don't, Johnny. Don't do what Johnny don't does. <laughs> 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 and so the next day you know it's raining outside and we see zandali walking around with her umbrella but then i don't know rickety cricket shows up and is like hey you got something for me <laughs> <laughs> and she's like yeah sure here's an umbrella ah oh, much obliged young lady and goes like walking off with it but of course johnny literally on the fucking spots right there like oh hey there why don't you <laughs> oh god what does he say i want to i want to shake you naked and eat you alive <laughs> like oh Johnny, my friend, it's you too need much. to relax. Yeah. Yep. Down boy. And then and then okay, then he, they like go into like an alley where it's not like torrential downpour on them or whatever. And they have this whole conversation where it's like, you want it and I want to give it. It's the perfect relationship. It's not a relationship. And then they just bang right there, like at a gate in an alley in the rain. Oh, and yeah. like, he says cool. he Okay, now this is a woman he's apparently been around no more than three times. Yeah. Um, but he gives the line, I like it when you don't wear anything underneath. Mm-hmm. And then she um, pulls down her panties. Drops um, them panties. Into like the dirty rainwater. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, this is uh, like, you're just going to leave them there. That's even weirder. Because they're like also like at, on a church ground. Right. Or I don't know, maybe all of New Orleans. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just like an alley where there was, yeah, it was a pretty nice little like wrought iron gate or whatever, but yeah, but probably just a little alley to like a courtyard or something. So but, the lesson is boys, 
if the, if your best friend's wife does not seem to like you, maybe there's some unspoken sexual tension and you should explore that. Please don't do that. Or not. <laughs> or, or you know, the, the, the views of Michael Tanner are not necessarily those <laughs> of everything I learned from movies. <laughs> I mean, that's what I learned from movies, right? When I was 11 years old. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, save it till the end. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we they uh, yeah, then we uh, immediately cut to aggressive pound towning in uh, in his studio, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, post coitus, we get the, the question every man wants to hear What are you thinking? <laughs> Where are you, <laughs> Mike? How many times out of 10 are you not thinking when you're asked that question? Uh, like a, a good 11 out of 10. <laughs> Empty head. No Sometimes thoughts. you just want to leave your body. And... Like I, <laughs> I just got my nut. I have no reason to think for the next five minutes. Thank you. So when um, they say post-nut clarity, they really just mean like nothingness. That's yeah. the clear part. <laughs> so it says the rain has swept me bare. Have <laughs> I ever asked you what you're thinking? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. I was probably asleep. No, but I... <laughs> what are you thinking? That's what I thought. <laughs> but no, instead, uh, Johnny's like, "You must be a sad woman." What? What? Yeah, the was it like the the you can't uh, you can't beat the clairvoyance of the eyes. <laughs> yeah, and I, I I had to stop. I was like, I don't I I don't think that is the right use of the word clairvoyance yeah. but also i'm not 100 percent sure on that and so maybe the screenwriter is way smarter than me and that is like a legit poetic line but man does it sound weird yeah it sounds super weird and also steve i realized uh the only thing i think most guys are thinking post not is uh Vanilla Rocky Road. Chocolate <laughs> Rich Vanilla Rocky Road. Chocolate peanut butter cookie dough. Yes. <laughs> well, now our secret's out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I let it slip once. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you sing it to the pets, like, constantly. <laughs> yes, I can hear you from the kitchen. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> but uh so yeah so then uh you know they're they're exchanging i don't know awkward post-nut glances um uh, but you know remember they're in uh they're in an art studio so then uh yeah. johnny reaches over dips his finger into his palette on some blue paint and uh just starts running his moist painted <laughs> lead painted finger down the middle <laughs> <laughs> betwixt the breast down past the belly button into her golden valley or i don't know pretty close to it don't get paint in that no no, no. I, I, I think he stopped at the shrubbery that was there but, all right uh, <laughs> uh i read the trivia on on this and this is apparently <laughs> her first scene the first scene they filmed was this scene oh um so that's a hell of a way to be introduced uh to your co-star who is uh <laughs> nicholas cage um and apparently she was incredibly uncomfortable during the filming of the scene. What? Which, weird. I do. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. I'm doing the movie with this guy from Valley girl. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the other guy from, uh, Ridgemont high. I don't yeah. Know. But, uh, <laughs> was moonstruck moonstruck was out by, Oh yeah. By, moonstruck. Right now. Yeah, so yeah. it would have also been like, weird oh, like aren't you a bigger star than this no mike i got it you know the guy from vampire's kiss <laughs> <laughs> that's the here he's kind of eccentric but you know <laughs> should be fun should be a fun filming experience <laughs> yeah. so so yeah he just starts painting on her and you know blah 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 meanwhile we hear the phone ring in and it goes to voicemail like it's fucking rockford files and it's uh <laughs> <laughs> some guy is like hey it's pepe meet me at for the five deuces at six and bring cash homes i'll bring i got what you want so this uh, is the get... first kind of like maybe a semblance of a plot or like maybe. some sort of rising action or like oh johnny's got some sort of like thing going on it sounds yeah, a little got... nefarious something got happening. some way to make money that isn't art like literally anybody who does art <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so 
So we go back to you know the main apartment, you know, uh, Judge and or, Terry and uh, Z- Zendali's apartment. Zende- I keep wanting to say Zendaya, and I'm like, no, it's not that Steve. That's I always want to say Zanali. I always want to drop the D for some reason. Hey, uh, phrasing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so <laughs> like, her name D. is difficult to get off to get down. <laughs> get off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're back at Zataran's apartment, and. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is New Orleans, right? <laughs> but uh, you know, Tata, the grandmother, we find out uh, she's having a little chat with uh, Zendaya, no, uh, Zandali, and uh, she's she's basically like, "Look, uh, I want to." Uh, it, it's basically it's like, "I look, I'm a woman. I got needs. I have a friend. I'm like, oh, maybe you should invite him over for dinner. We can meet your friend. Totally. Why not?" Yep, because I that's all I want to know is who grandma's fuck buddy that's is. That's right. My <laughs> my, my uh grandmother in law or whatever. Yeah, who who's she banging? But uh and we then go back to the bar and we see Johnny doing his little uh magic card trick or whatever. It's like, is this your card? Like having it levitate kind of out of the out of the deck. And then yeah. you know, he does the the exchange He's with the bar Chris Angel there. all over this bar. Yeah, mind freak. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he has a little uh, exchange of, I don't know, something for cash with the, the bartender. Like, hey, Peppy left something for you. Oh, cool. Thanks. Blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, you know, Terry, he he sees him there and he's like, oh, good. I found you. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, you want to come have dinner with me? Uh, sure. Yeah, we're going to meet uh, my Tata's boyfriend. It's going to be great. Uh, sure. We can do that. Why not? You know? <laughs> So then we go to the the little dinner party they're having. And, uh, you know, we got the main couple, Terry and Zendaya. So, 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 so we got uh, Tata and her boyfriend, Louie. And then we got uh, Johnny and his girlfriend, Marissa fucking Tomei. Or Remy, as we find out. And uh, she's, a, she's a cutie, but I don't know. But the only thing she really does in the scene is like she tries to make a Marx Brothers joke. Yeah, about. she's uh, very strangely, she is the most interesting person at this dinner party. Like, she tries to make jokes. Like, she is bubbly. She is like, um, I know we're supposed to think she's kind of like low rent and trashy, but she, yeah, she references the Marx Brothers at this yeah. dour, right? weirdo, awkward dinner party. I'm like, I, Marissa Tomei is is a uh, she's the girl you want to take. Why isn't she the star of this movie? Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what uh, my cousin Vinny was like. Look, this lady here, she's gonna be a fucking star. Yeah, I don't know. She Marissa she's girl. a little annoying, but she seems fun. Yeah, yeah, totally. But uh, but yeah, during the dinner party, um, uh, Johnny goes for an aggressive leg petting of uh, <laughs> Zandali, and you know. Tries to like slide his hand up her leg or whatever, but she of course pulls a fork out and puts a stop to that shit. He tells him to fork off. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then uh Johnny says, Well, Terry, uh, Mr. Martin, you'd uh, married the wrong woman. What? <laughs> well, if you'd have made my day Remy here, then she would be Remy Martin. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Mark's brother joke is better. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh so then, oh man. Dinner's over. You know what that means. Time for an erotic dessert. The Cherry Jubilee. Anyone want to say what a... (laughs) Describe what a Cherry Jubilee is? What's a Cherry Jubilee, Steve? You take a bunch of wrapped cherries and boil them in cream and then sprinkle them with spun sugar and serve them in a quadroon's vagina that is a very awkward thing to have to say in front of your grandmother it your sure is boyfriend. And your grandmother's fuck buddy yeah, yeah. also can also uh i believe he says that grandmother told him that that's what the, uh, the dessert <laughs> just like grandma served. used to make yeah. <laughs> uh at the uh whorehouse the high-end whorehouse that she, grandma worked at or just knew mm-hmm. about i don't know it's very it's very vague like the origin of that look there are many jobs at a whorehouse they're not always whores some are administrative yeah, some, just the ladies i want to say some are ticket takers somebody's got to do the accounting in the book yeah somebody's got to manage the the musical acts 
Right? It's funny. I did know someone who was the uh, accountant and front door person at an Australia because uh, in Australia, like brothels are legal. Um, I knew this person. She was the she was the accountant and front door person at a brothel in um, I think in Sydney, uh, and that was um, weird because I did not know that. She's like, yeah, that's my day job. I'm like, that's... Sydney, Illinois. Is that... <laughs> The uh, fine city of Sydney, Australia. You know this. Oh, that that makes more sense. Okay. <laughs> uh, so what's going on in the kitchen? Get, oh yeah, she's uh warming up that cherry jubilee, which I'm like, um, okay, how? But don't worry about it, Steve. That's not what you need to know. Uh, but Johnny goes in to help out, and uh, you know, Zandali, she's 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 angry. She's like, don't you bring your girlfriends here? And I'm like, uh. You have no reason to be angry, but cool, whatever. Um, and Johnny's like, hey, so uh, why don't you take this coon ass prick and get <laughs> inside me? I'm like, what? <laughs> Mike, what yeah. happens? Um, well, first, I'm made very uncomfortable by like, I don't know what a coon ass is, but it does not sound not racist. Uh, um, it, 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 I mean, I it's. Yeah, it's definitely the racist version of a uh, bitch ass, basically. Now, oh, okay. I think. Oh, it's yeah. it's not somebody who just eats raccoons in the. the uh, I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> I, but so I'm very uncomfortable by, by that turn of phrase. Uh, but All so right, I'm gonna jump on to are you incognito gonna, oh, no. mode. Are you incognito mode. Incognito mode. Safe search off. UrbanDictionary.com. Yeah, it, it it might be like a like like bumpkin like something like that, but as a term for someone of Cajun ethnicity, it's uh, viewed, yeah. viewed as derogatory. Although some Cajuns embrace the name. So yeah, so basically you're swamp person. Yeah. Mm, all right. Oh, he's a swamp person, I guess. Yeah. So uh, so they this um enemies to oh, lovers. You can register yourself as a coon ass. Oh boy. Like for church, like there's the can RCA. You the oh yeah, it's got a badge with a with a with raccoon rac- with its tail raised and everything. Wow, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. What a country! Right. Uh, so uh, things get heated, uh, and um, Zandali uh, accepts Johnny's challenge, and uh, she um, uh, she's going to have very tired knees at the end yeah. of it. And we get she, the first sense that uh, Terry is aware because he's like, they've been gone for an awful long time. And there's just this lingering shot on him where he's just doing the like math in his head. And he's like, oh, oh, yeah, they're, yep, I think they're probably in the kitchen fucking. Um, yeah. oh, and I'm, so, I'm, I'm shocked so, that it didn't end with uh, Johnny yelling, coming when someone asked for yeah where they yeah yeah i was waiting for that too i'm not gonna look but yeah basically she just like immediately goes down and i don't know assist him to be ready and like yeah basically starts like kind of blowing him right there in the kitchen you know it's all blow screen or whatever and that's when terry's like how's that does johnny come in here i gotta introduce him uh just a minute i'm washing my hands <laughs> okay and then next scene they're literally going like into the next room and fucking on top of the washing machine romantic yeah hot baby mm. but yeah 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 terry's uh putting it together in his head you just kind of like hmm all right and then we cut to touchdown jesus there on near jackson square right by the police station steve how do you know that don't worry about it <laughs> but, but uh yeah Zandali, she's jogging again i don't know terry talks to tata about i don't know uh it oh that's right this is where he has a conversation like look uh i'm you know we met louis last night and everything i i recognize him like he was always he was always in the periphery, periphery. And, like he was always nearby when uh he's like yes yes I, he's been a friend of mine for a long long time what about your husband though <laughs> look i don't regret anything so apparently you know tata tata had a side piece basically yep. right Tata had her own Johnny Collins. Yeah, but yeah, Zandali, she's jogging around, blah, blah, blah. And then Johnny just reaches out and pulls her into an alley. And then romantic, uh, right? And then he's the whole night he's like, Why'd you do it? What what why'd I do what? Why'd you marry him? He was a poet. Oh yeah? Is this not poetry? As he starts to finger blaster. 
<laughs> and then okay. And then like as this is like this scene's starting to get intense, we then cut to Judge Reinhold coming out wearing nothing but a towel. <laughs> He's like, Zandali, you here? Huh. This is her her nighty on the bed, and I can smell the stank on it. Mm. I, I is it right? That, that that's what happens in the scene? Yeah. Like mm. it's uh like what's the best way to describe it? Um he he's becoming wise to the situation um presumably through the uh, power of smell um and you know like that's a difficult place to be in i mean where where the two of them are fucking on the street like judge reinhold's fine he's just in his apartment but it's a difficult place to like fuck on the street right so kudos to them (laughs) for finding a way to uh make that a erotic situation work yeah, he, heroes of all types out there. No, oh, I, I know what it was. He was sniffing and he's like, hmm, this smells like the intersection of Decatur and St. Hans. <laughs> this smells like coon ass. <laughs> it's coon ass in these panties. <laughs> 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 but someone with the name Zandali definitely is a coon ass as well. So. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Let's see where we're from. Oh yeah, so yeah, while he's sniffing the panties, we then cut to you know back to the studio, aka Pound Town, where uh, basically Johnny and uh, Zendali is going at it, and it's like, say it. No, I don't want to say it. Terry, Terry, fuck people. And I'm like, uh, what? A <laughs> okay, what's going on here? I don't, I don't like this. But apparently, that's when it's like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Okay, cool. So then she goes home and there's like a like a note waiting waiting for her. I think she like picks up off the counter. I don't know what that was all about, but uh next day we're at the dress shop and uh I, I don't know. Uh her and uh, Joey Pants chase off a couple of like guys in front of the 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 dress shop or I I don't know, about to get high or something. I don't they, know. They're uh they are I think they're selling or they're looking to buy. Drugs. Oh, okay, yeah, and that's why the, uh, the, there was a pants. business transaction going. Yeah, down. okay. Like, hey, so it again that. kind of plays into the weird almost subplot of like drug dealing. Yeah, like what drugs in New Orleans? Perish the thought. Yes. But uh, but we do get a little background on uh, uh, Joey Pants. Well, actually, just a little story about his uncle Arthur, who I guess was the sheriff of town, and uh, mm-hmm. no, you know. Uh, basically had a price and just about everybody could meet it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's what all that story goes into. It's like ever, you know, everything's for sale in this city. Uh, it seems like that story would mean more if it was told to Terry, who's dealing with like the feeling of selling out um, yeah. and having to deal with the corruption of the city. Or if it's not told to Terry, then it should be told closer to a scene with terry kind of on that subject um which i like honestly i can't remember now maybe like the next scene is terry like uh, like in the office or something where it does come up but yeah it is a it is a weird bit of backstory for a character who didn't need more backstory and that backstory didn't inform anything about joey pants's character it just was a weird weird background story yeah, and of course she's kind of like, "All right, cool story, bro. Uh, hey, I'm gonna take my lunch now. Is that cool? Like, oh, you gotta do your uh, lunch liaison. Yeah, I'll cover for you." And uh, so yeah, she goes to Johnny's apartment or a studio or whatever, and uh, he's not there. But then, uh, goddamn it, that voice machine's still going off, and there's some other girl. It's like, ah, oh, Johnny, come get me. I'm pining for you. I, that's mm. Remy, right? That's uh, Marissa Tomei in I, voiceover form. I don't know if it was Remy because we get Remy a little later. Uh, like, like apparently she's there for a while, and like I, I'm assuming like eight or nine different girls have been calling up. Like, <laughs> oh, Johnny, quick, come get in my guts. Johnny, know. quick, you gotta taste my etouffee. Yeah, like. <laughs> I got my cherry jubilee ready and the absinthe's really starting to burn. Like, I don't know. But, but yeah, but, but but meanwhile, Johnny's not there. Why? Because Terry got promoted and he's having a little uh little lunchtime chat with Johnny in his office. He's like, oh, don't worry here. I got you some lunch. Have a seat. Have a seat. You uh you got a mistress, Johnny? 
I'm not married, so I can't have a mistress. Cool. Mm, got cool, his cool. ass there. Yep. Uh, but then, yeah, eventually that just, it, it just goes nowhere. It's, it's kind of like, you know, Terry just basically being like, look, I know what you're doing. Just, you can stop. And, you know, Johnny being like, anyway, gotta go back to work, boss. Bye-bye. You know. <laughs> Throws the hamburger that, that Terry got him back. Oh, it was, oh, there's a great line of that scene where it's, uh, Johnny's like, oh, I'm on my lunch. And Terry's like, oh, I took care of it. And like tosses the hamburger like in a bag or whatever to him. Yeah. And Johnny goes, do you want to taste my peach? I'm like, oh, yeah, they should have given that line to Terry. Uh, That would have been a lot more um, clever. Uh, But I'm like, no. I don't know. Johnny also kind of trying to rub it in. like, Oh, that's true. Like, she's mine now. Yeah. But uh, we got to uh, Zandali. She's still in the studio. And, you know, again, more. I think this is where, like, more voicemails are coming in. And, like, it's Remy on there. Like, ah, quit. Get in me. Um, and then, yeah, she just goes fucking ham and like pulls the cassette out. So it's like, just, you know, pulling out the, oh my God, the tape or whatever and all that. And then she just starts fucking throwing paint everywhere and kicking all of his shit and just makes a whole fucking mess of the place. Right. She's real fucking jealous for somebody who didn't want this relationship. Supposedly. <laughs> uh huh. They drive each other crazy. Yeah. Still, uh, that kind of bullshit. Right. But then it's nighttime and we're on a streetcar and Terry's singing <laughs> when you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. All that shit. Right. Maybe, maybe he's starting to get that, that artistic spirit back. Right. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. So anyway, Johnny goes to see Zandali at the chapel. Cause you know, she's there all by herself. And uh, basically Johnny's like, move in with me. What? No. Don't what what are you talking about? I can't do that. He would die. We all die. Everybody dies. So leave him. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and then this is where we get our first real cage moment because he's like, Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't talk like that here. Because the Lord can hear me better here. Fuck shit ass cunt motherfucker. <laughs> Lord strike me down. La, 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 la. And then they go and fuck in the confessional. So this, yeah. okay, I, I mentioned earlier to Steve in chat, how I remembered three scenes from this movie. Oh, yeah. This was one. Um, <laughs> and this this scene, um, he, he hits a lot different as an adult. I was like, oh, this scene is skeezy. It's not erotic as 11-year-old Mike thought it was. Um, but in my head, if you had asked me to, oh, describe the, uh, the confessional scene in Zandali. I would have described it pretty much note for, note for note, except in my head, the final line um, was different. And so in the movie, okay, Nicolas Cage uh, takes her, not necessarily consensually from behind. Uh, it yep. does not last long. It is. It Poor is pump like, butt stuff is the like yep. note. Um, and then Nicolas Cage looks up and says, thank you, father. And the scene ends. Um, in my head (laughs) that final line was always he finishes he looks up and says amen which i think is a better end line for that scene um and i will uh forever say that my rewrite in my imagination is mike might i punch it up just a little bit when he says thank you father you hear a voice from the booth next door saying you uh got something you want to talk to me about (laughs) Like, you know you can't oh, sorry, do that father. Anymore. I didn't know you were there. <laughs> I, I hope my cherry jubilee didn't spill over on you. <laughs> like, is this the guy from the bar with the magic tricks? Yeah, it's like, hey, I remember you. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you know, Zandali after the four pump butt stuff uh, runs off, and Johnny catches up with her, and uh, I don't know, slaps her exchanged, and then she kicks him in the crotch, and then runs off some more. And, uh, of course, because everything's within, like, four blocks down there, you know, uh, Terry's out on the porch just enjoying the night air and the breeze off the Mississippi. And they're like, oh, there's my wife, Zandalee, running like she just got butt raped. Uh, Zandalee, what are you doing? She runs into Bourbon Street. She's just kind of staggering around for a bit. I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, she goes back to uh, her home, you know, the apartment or whatever. And uh, Tata and Louie are playing board games. Okay. Cool. It must be a Tuesday night, you know, pretty low, low key evening. And, uh, you know, 
Tata and Zandali, they have a little chat. And they're like, look, <laughs> Tata's basically like, look, most marriages suffer. It's the good ones that can conquer it. You know, <laughs> like this happens to everybody, <laughs> you know. Sometimes a Nicolas Cage pirate artist comes through and just <laughs> sweeps you right off your feet. Just uh, eats you alive, you might say, or they might say even. He just eats you for breakfast. Yeah. <sighs> but you you need to talk to your husband. And uh, so she goes in the bedroom and, uh, you know, Terry's uh, three sheets to the wind at this point. Like he's. Uh, <laughs> she, she's, she's basically like. We need to talk. Like, like no accent whatsoever. Like this scene in particular, I'm like, oh man. Oh yeah. <laughs> this this lady was made for Red Shoe Diaries. Uh, so, <laughs> but but you know, uh, <laughs> Colonel Ranhold, he's going. Like, what do you mean? I'm just enjoying. <laughs> and she's like, I have something I have to tell you. Like, I don't want to know. And all I know is, I don't want to know. I do declare. <laughs> You know, I tried to quit Southern Calm earlier today, but I just, I just, you know, I just couldn't, you know, <laughs> I enjoy the money too much. <laughs> and then this where she's like, we don't know how to talk. And I'm like, agreed. You guys don't know how to talk <laughs> at all. Uh, but, you know, the, the conversation is like, look, we're both sorry. Let's go away for a while. Just you and me. We'll. We we can try again, you know. We kindle that old flame, and then uh, and then we cut to Johnny laying back in those stained sheets that she messed up earlier. He only has <laughs> the one pair of sheets. Poor yeah. poor forethought. <laughs> Go back. He's got like a canvas laying on there now. Closest so, to a sheet I've got. But uh, oh yeah, this is the first time where like like he's uh walking around the street or or that's right. Like the next morning he uh. I, I don't know. Has a quick little conversation with. I'm like, is that the the kid from Gremlins, but with a beard? But you know, I, I didn't know. Until I looked it up. So he goes to the bar. Uh, yeah, Johnny. He goes to the bar, and uh, Terry's there, and Johnny's just doing his little pickup thing, and uh, he's like, Terry, what are you doing here? Like, oh, I'm just, you know, enjoying myself. And you know, Zandalee, she's she's running around somewhere. You know how she does. We're going to the bayou. Like, oh, to our old fishing hole? Hey, yeah, that's right. And I don't know. They start talking about like honor and lies and manipulations. They're, they're, they're just drunk off their asses and, you know, whatever. But uh, it's definitely giving good, like, oh, this is how much is like you could tell Johnny is trying to figure out how much does Terry know? And yeah, Terry yeah. is doing like, I know. But I want you to keep guessing about how much I know. It's I don't uh, know like who I do it is for all I, I know. I it could really be you, like, Johnny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it just like stands behind him, like <laughs> ominously, like I know it was you, motherfucker. All the scenes between Judge Reinhold and, and Nicolas Cage are phenomenal. Oh yeah. Um, and I it makes me wish that they had done more movies together. Um, because damn, they they've got good uh good chemistry on screen. There's still time. <laughs> uh yeah so yeah then we cut to you know them in the bayou like an old speedboat or whatever <laughs> yeah um uh, well them uh terry and zendaya <laughs> zandali sorry the name of the movie steve terry and zandali <laughs> they're going on a boat we're going through the bayou um but terry's getting like motion sick apparently it's been a while since he's been in one of these boats and uh i don't know eventually they slow down and uh, you know, Zandalee is like, you were just born a century too late. Let's go fishing over here. And then cut to them fishing. And at first I thought she was just lying naked in the grass on the banks or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Come the fuck on lady. Oh no, no. She was, she was wearing a nice little slip or whatever. Just, yeah. you know, it was open. And apparently there's a deleted scene of, um, them making flower crowns, uh, for each other. Cause they each are wearing a fanciful flower crown and there's a uh, oh, flowers yeah. picked all around them. It's like, that's a, that's a cute detail showing that things are good. They're having fun together. Uh, Judge Reinhold, you know, turns around and sees her laying, laying there almost naked except for a little vest. And she of course sits up and pulls the vest away. So Judge Reinhold can see some boobies and she's like, take it now. And he's like, I just want to look. And you're like, Oh, come on, judge. Come on. Show her, show her you got it now. 
And then he does show her that he's got that, yeah, he that he's got it. He gives her the full gavel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, even uh, it shows them like like right there on the thing, and then it cuts to them like back at the I don't know shack or whatever they're staying at. Just ha ha ha. You know? Yeah, that is very confusing. But like, well, where 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 are they staying? Like, yeah, because it, it's is this an Airbnb? Like, what what is this place? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah we get to see Judge Reinhold, but yeah. did did you ever <laughs> expect to see Judge Reinhold butt in your life? No, I know I didn't, but now I've seen it. I mean, I mean, I mean, one can a, hope. I would say a girl can dream. <laughs> Dreams come true. Yeah. But the, you know, next morning or whatever, uh, they go to like the, I guess the bait shop or general store or whatever down there. And uh, like, you know, grab some beer. Terry grabs some beers and he's like asking the guy there, like, you got any good bait? Oh, yeah, I got some real good stick and made, baby. You guys can't make with a wife here around. <laughs> Almost way you make it. Like that kind of shit, right? But then, uh, then you hear from the back. You know, I hear like, oh shit, Johnny's there. <laughs> you gotta, I'm just a small time so cat's loyal. blood to catch oh, yeah. catch catfish. <laughs> and this is where like, oh, see, now there's been a flip. Johnny is the villain. He's the creepy ex who's now fault stalking them. Yeah. But the instead, uh, you know, Terry's like, hey, good seeing you here. Must have must have been me talking about this place that got you wanting to come out here. Yeah, must have been. Why don't you join us? Uh, okay. Xanalee's just outside. Yeah. We could we could take a turn. <laughs> and then and then okay, so then they go outside and Xandalee's like, what the fuck is he doing here? You know, yeah. just that look of like, what's going on here, Terry? This is stupid. Um, and then the I, I don't know. Apparently they were hearing this Zydeco score that we heard in the background, but I'm like. How are they hearing it out there? It's not like there's a surround sound system outside of this bait shop. Right? Yeah, that's a hell of a good jukebox that bait shop has. Yeah. But uh, yeah, then uh, Johnny and Terry just start like doing a fucking like waltz dance to the Zydeco or whatever. And it is. Uh, this, OK, because I just talked about how great their chemistry is. Yeah, yeah I please, love please. this bit. Them dancing. So it's like it's like gripped hands their hands are like they're holding hands tight and they're like it is a like a waltz they're dancing and as it escalates where it's so close to them in a fist fight mm-hmm. but it's still a dance and it's shot so well like there's a great backdrop of like the water like the river behind them like they're framed perfectly like together uh, with zandali like off to the side the wind is blowing it is a great series of shows. It is a great sequence. It just slowly starts to escalate. Their grips are tighter. Like their movements become more forced as if they're like, they are trying everything in their power, not just to punch each other. And then the song oh. ends. And see, um, see, Mike, I read it as they were trying as hard as they could not to fucking kiss because oh, there's oh, some yeah. intense I mean, eye fucking I mean, going on. It's a fine yeah. line between fighting and fucking, right? Yeah. Like, they are that's they why are there for really each other. upset because he wanted to fuck Nick Cage first. Yeah. I mean, I feel that's fair. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, eventually yeah, when the song's over, they just like break it up, like, anyone want a beer? <laughs> and Zendali's like, Yeah, I'll have a beer. And he's like, Well, then come get your fucking beer. Then come over and get it. And that's like the weirdest <laughs> turn. You're like, oh, yes, yeah, shit, <laughs> Terry's crazy now. Yep. Yeah. He is very mad. And, and then, so then, uh, yeah, so then it's flipped again. We're like, oh shit, is Johnny now the hero? Because Terry's clearly like fighting back massive rage at his wife. And uh, is at what's the but, next turn? Well, then you know, Johnny's like, look, I've come to take you home. And then they both turn around, and Terry's pulling a fucking gun. What? <laughs> what's happening now? Not like, Terry, what are you blue, doing? Huh? <laughs> And yeah, he like points at them, points at points at his own head, and then just kind of like pops off into the bayou as one does. Obviously, nobody in the bait shop even came to see what was going on. They're just yeah, like they didn't even eh, the typical. And then the, I, I don't know, Zandalee says, it's over. Hey, want to go fishing? Yeah. And then they go. <laughs> and they... That's how you get murdered. Yep. Yeah. It's driving that boat deeper and deeper into the bayou, and it's uh, you know, you're it, irritated driving like i don't know they're just trying to get a rise out of each other and shit i don't know uh definitely a little inebriation going on i don't know but uh when it's unclear what 
Terry's plan is, if there is a plan. It seemed yeah. as if it was, I'm going to take you back to the fishing hole from when we were kids because that meant something to us. And then I'm going to murder you and murder my wife because I've gone crazy. But then like Nicholas Cage is like, hey, isn't the fishing spot the other direction? So Terry's just fucking dr- driving the boat randomly through the bayou and then lets Johnny take over driving. And then Johnny's just driving super fast. And it's yeah. it's a very, there's no tension being built other than no. like, that's audience the, confusion uh, the only thing that's tense about this scene really other than just sheer confusion is the fucking music is kind of suspenseful like yeah. and i'm just like they're just fucking driving a boat otherwise and being drunken idiots like i i i can see this at a family reunion you know like <laughs> but yeah like faster 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 and you know uh Zandali, she's getting scared and you know terry he just pulls that gun back out and just starts popping off behind i don't know trying to hit gators or yeah, some coon ass he saw i don't know but but yeah eventually he just kind of falls out of the boat Whoop! <laughs> you know he's in the the mucky waters of the bayou and uh i don't know johnny grabs zandali and is like no you coming home with me he's like oh, he's he's in the fucking water i'm gonna go save him he's, he's caught in the hassan like oh, yeah that's, that's, that's right like most southern like like danger is that like quicksand what is that i don't know what yeah. that is. <laughs> oh no <laughs> the quicksand of the south <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah johnny like slaps zandali but then zandali's like fuck you and then like dives into the water after terry and terry's sinks and i'm like oh okay yeah i guess he's gotten the stuff or whatever uh and you know johnny goes jumping into johnny basically just pulls Zandali away like to save her I guess uh but he goes back for Terry pulls him up and then Terry just bites his fucking neck like he's a vampire (laughs) this is the second scene I remembered like as soon as as soon as like uh Cage pulled like Terry up I was like does he he fucking bites him doesn't he and then the Mm -hmm. bite happened I was like holy shit I can't believe I remembered that weird little detail yeah so yeah, after he bites him, Terry just goes back into the water, and uh, Johnny's like, "Oh no, Terry, where'd you go? Come on back here! Oh, you son of a bitch, you bit me!" And, and he like dump, dives down the water a couple times, and I'm like, "Well, Johnny's dead here in a couple days because he's got an open wound." And oh, he's oh yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, then we just kind of fade to the cemetery sometime later. And this we... is okay, and so this is my my big critique of the movie <laughs> is the movie has fucking ended. Yep. The movie yes. is over. At yep. most, you're give it. You're, you you can give me two three minutes here at the grave, and then there better be fucking credits. Uh-huh. And the Mike, movie does not. We get. What if I were to tell you there was shit. a good ten to fifteen minutes left of this movie? My God, it was a nightmare. But <laughs> the one high point is we see Zandali at the grave of Terry, and guess <laughs> who makes his triumphant return to the movie? Everybody, we get Mister Steve Buscemi. He's here to save us with this awkward scene. Yeah. Hey, you got any money? <laughs> I don't have any money. I got some chicken and biscuits. Nah, I'm a vegetarian. That line anyway, me up. She's just help. fucking walking around with Popeyes. Is that is that yeah. just a thing? <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's definitely a thing the, down I'm New Orleans. Go to the don't you worry. Cemetery with my chicken and biscuits. Visit yeah. my husband's grave. Some of us go to church in different ways. Oh, it should have been church's chicken. No, oh. but uh. <laughs> But yeah, Steve Buscemi's like, how you been? You look fucking terrible. I killed my husband. Oh. Um, okay. And then and then Zandali starts going to think like, how can you drown when you can when you can swim? Like, that doesn't make sense. Is, <laughs> like, uh, I think a lot of people um drown who can swim. I don't think they're uh related, like necessarily. Yeah. And then Steve Buscemi basically acts like he's been watching the whole fucking movie because he's like well, if your husband did, you probably got a big dick radar on the side, right? Like, <laughs> you know, be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Anyway, I'm out of this movie. Bye. <laughs> so then we cut to her crying, like, in the curtains saying, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> and, uh, okay, cool. And, and Tata's just watching this like, Jesus Christ. Like, I'm not even, <laughs> like... We're, we're not even related Do, does she have to still live here yeah like how how long before i bring up rent like uh, <laughs> but then uh is yeah. this where you thought tata was gonna poison her 
<laughs> it's coming up, coming up. Oh, okay, it's okay. coming up. So yeah, we cut to back to Johnny's studio, and he's he, you know he's making art, but uh, you know we we hear like in the voicemails or whatever, like you know Pepe wants his fucking money. You gotta you gotta pay those uh, payable accounts or whatever line it is. Yeah, and uh, and then we go to the dress shop in the morning, and uh, uh, Tata's there out front, you know, with Zendaleigh and Joey Pants, and she's like trying to clean up some ants out front. And talking about like, well, yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to get some poison to get these ants out of here. And uh, Xander Lee's like, I'll go get it. And the, but Tata was like, no, I'll go get the poison. And I'm like, Ooh. oh shit, is Tata about to become the MVP of this fucking movie? <laughs> MVP, MVP. So then we see uh, Johnny at the bar, you know, doing his exchange thing, and you know, uh, three shots of tequila, blah blah blah, you know, blah blah blah. And then he uh, drops a hard F bomb about being fired from a uh, Southern Com. And uh, I don't know. There's like another scene where uh, Raj, you know, the, the kid from Gremlins and Waxwork comes in and like checks out his art. And he's like, see anything you like, man? Yeah, you can take it to your gallery. He's like, oh, yeah, this one's pretty cool. Nah, that's old shit. You don't want that. Blah, blah, blah. You know, he's basically just a fucking dick. Uh, yeah, I think it's I th- OK. So this is the first scene where like. Nicholas Cage isn't necessarily playing drunk. He's playing like, um, like high. Yeah. So, okay. I'm like, okay. So like, clearly we're now getting somewhere more with the drug plot. Like, all right, I'm going to just assume like it's heroin. Cause he's an artist. It's so, all right. Okay. So we're, I'm still wishing this movie had ended five minutes ago. Uh, but okay. At least something is happening. And yeah, basically Nicholas Cage uh, sabotages any chance he has of making it as an artist and then has an amazing freak out mm-hmm. <laughs> where he just covers himself in black paint yelling paint it black, right? Is it he's yelled paint it black paint or it make black, it black? Paint it black. <laughs> paint it black. <laughs> it's just like splashing in black paint. It is. If you like unhinged Nicholas Cage, you you watch this movie straight through even though it's already ended. Get to this scene because it is it is some yeah. great. And the way the scene is, like, he's kicking down all of his easels and stuff. And he's just, oh, this is all shit, blah, blah, blah. Smash cut to him buck-ass naked covering himself in the black paint. It's like... He's not buck-ass naked. He's wearing socks. Oh, he's was he wearing, wearing socks? His socks. Yeah. Oh, shit. And they're like, okay, I didn't know that. Socks oh, yeah, no, yeah. He it's had, like, like, the tubiest of tube gym socks. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then we go to the chapel. And uh, or like like in front of the the St. Louis Chapel there at uh, Jackson Square, and we see Zandali, and she is not feeling well. She's holding her stomach hunched over, and I'm like, "Fucking yes, here we go." Yeah, I I don't know what was going on because she immediately drops it like three seconds later. But it's like, I, I don't know, was she just having cramps or whatever from jogging? I, I don't know what, but grief. Sure, yeah, grief. She, you <laughs> grief, know, right in the guts. grief cramps. <laughs> but uh she goes home and Johnny's there waiting in the apartment and is like, oh your door was unlocked or whatever. And uh <laughs> it's, it's like Dracula cage there. Your door Ooh. was unlocked. I've left myself <laughs> in. <laughs> Another drink. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, uh, yeah, they have this whole thing like Terry didn't want to be saved. I tried, but you know, he he wanted to drown out there and be a victim. I don't know, whatever. And uh, I love you. And she's like, you don't know anything about love. And they just start slapping the shit out of each other. And then they start going to pound town again. And I, I don't know. Apparently she starts calling out Terry's name. And that's like the ultimate boner killer to, <laughs> to Johnny. Yeah. I and mean, fair. And then, okay. Then Zandali gets up opens up like the closet that still has like Terry's clothes in it or whatever and just puts on uh, what the fuck is this it's like it's like I a thought it was coat, a shirt but it's yeah I but thought it was just like a button up shirt but it goes like, down to her fucking ankles yeah, I was like, it's a dress oh, it's a button up dress yeah. was it just a button up dress? Like, like, dress it was her button up dress though because that I was thought, like all yeah. work clothes she was playing with it's a button up dress oh. I thought it was a jacket because it looks yeah. way too big for her yeah, it's like a nice white duster. Yeah. <laughs> She's walking like renegade out of the house now. But <laughs> but uh yeah, she just kind of walks off and Johnny's following behind, like, you know, five steps behind or whatever, just to be weird. Why not? But then uh we see a guy rolling around in a Cadillac or whatever, and uh this must be Pepe. Hey Johnny! Johnny, got to obey your accounts, eh? 
And but Johnny's like, oh, I'm busy. I'm following this lady. Oh. And then uh, we see Pepe pulling around, you know, the one way streets there at the French Quarter. <laughs> and uh, we see him pulling out a gun and he pulls up, <laughs> aims it out the window. Uh, Johnny and Zandalee both turn around and Zandalee's like, no, I'm going to take these bullets for some reason. Pop, pop, I pop, want to pop. Die. And Pepe is like, you got to pay your accounts and drives off. And then Joey Pants shows up out of nowhere. I guess no the reason. dress shop Joey is right Pants around the corner. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and then what happens, Mike? Um, <laughs> Nicholas Cage cradles dead Zandali and cries. And then finally, after this movie has been over for 10 minutes, it finally ends and we get credits. Now, this is the third scene I remembered. <laughs> um because i like as soon as she like put on the shirt jacket coat and runs out of the house i was like oh that's right she put this on to hide the squibs uh-huh. for when she gets shot yeah. and then that i was like oh 100 yeah that they she put that on to hide the squibs yeah yeah J- yeah johnny basically walks off with her corpse like right there in jackson square and of course no cops around i mean this is new orleans in the early 90s nobody gives a fuck this is this might as well be uh uh easy rider like nobody gives a <laughs> shit but yeah that's uh that's zandali uh mike would you recommend this movie oh 100 percent. this movie is um ridiculous and i love it it is like it's silly it's feels a little long like I remember I paused it to like go to the bathroom and I was like, holy shit. I'm only 45 minutes in. I'm only halfway through. Yeah. Uh, Guys, then it picks th- up. This movie is 88 minutes <laughs> with when you take credits out. Like it yeah. is allegedly a short movie, but it feels long. <laughs> it feels long, but man, there are like, it's, it's Nicholas Cage, crazy Nicholas Cage. Great. Judge Reinhold. Also good. They have great chemistry. Uh, it's fun to see all these actors like, before they blew up like Marissa Tomei and C. Buscemi. Um, and I get maybe uh, um, arguably Joey pants. Um, although he's kind of a thing. He wasn't like as big of a thing yet. So yeah, I highly recommend it. It's not erotic. Um, it's just what? largely uncomfortable. A lot of the time yeah. if, when I was younger, I thought it was a, a very sexy movie. Um, now as a middle aged man, I'm like, this, this is um, maybe, maybe I'm just old. <laughs> just like this, this is a little vulgar for my taste. Like, Oh yeah. I, highly, to... I recommend this movie. Oh, you got to clean that up afterwards. Yes. Yeah. Like, How about you, is... babe? Would you recommend this movie? All right. I am notorious for not being a fan of these kinds of movies. That's called a super sexy sequel September. Yeah, this is probably like, like, like these weird sexual dramas are one of my least favorite genres of movies. This one's tolerable. Yeah, That's high praise for me. I mean, it really (laughs) is. Yeah, guys, it's, it's Nick Cage as Johnny Depp with a mullet in New Orleans. Uh, Yeah, it's it's not a great movie, but you throw in the accents, you throw yeah. in like the cast is fucking stacked. Yeah. 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 Dude, watch it for Steve Buscemi. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Honestly. His little little pepperings in between. Yeah. He keeps you intrigued. That's for goddamn sure. It, like, it's like when you have the salted caramel ice cream, you get that little hit of salt. Yeah. And you're just mm, like, ooh, yeah. ooh, this is this is refreshing. Yeah, guys, it's on Tubi. Check it the fuck out. Like, if if this sounds interesting at all, and it definitely should, uh, yeah, check it out. I, uh, yeah, well, that's all I can say. But on that note, we're gonna take a quick quick commercial break. Oh, but when we come back, we have more beer, <gasps> fun facts, what? and what we learned from Zandali. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. 
Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. In the mean streets of Steel Town, Detective John Claw is the law. Yeah. Jesus, John, he wasn't even resisting arrest. But when the warlords of Africa come to town, even the law needs some help. John, you've lost three partners this month, but we brought in an expert. Meet your new partner. She's been working with Interpol for years. Amy, good, good, gorilla. Captain, no. I don't partner with no talking monkey. Amy, no, monkey. Jesus, John, get woke, will you? She's an ape. And she's been following this Mokeli Mobibi character for years. You're not the only one that wants to take this some bitch down. <laughs> You did pretty good out there tonight. Clink. Where are you after, my baby? Amy, want justice. Bad man, kill family. What? I didn't know he killed your family. Drugs, guns, human trafficking, poaching. Mokele, my baby, is one evil man. I want Claw and his family dead. Michael Jai White as Mokele, my baby. You're too late, John. Now your girlfriend has to pay. Elizabeth Shue, because we need a girl in this movie. John, no! Save yourself! Jean-Claude Van Damme as John claude No! And in her triumphant return to cinema, the star of Congo, Amy. <laughs> Amy, I'm glad you could make it. As you can see, I made a vest out of your father. Amy, want justice. Kill ugly bad man. <laughs> you can try. Amy, no, try. Amy, do! <laughs> Coming this fall. Banana splits. Monkey see, monkey die. Directed by Simon West. Xandali! Definitely not Xanadu. Alright. Xanadu. Not Zanzibar. Yeah, or Zatarans, or... <laughs> they were not there, the Zatarans. Oh. I do like Zatarans. Everybody does. Oh, yeah, it's good stuff. I used to make a really good paella uh, oh, using uh, Zatarans Dirty Rice box. Ooh. Steve, I got an idea. Prove it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many podcasts out there. How do I find the one for me? For so long, I've searched for podcasts all over, but none of them seem to fit my needs. Where is my Nick Cage Pissing Fire podcast? Where's my monkey tickling? I couldn't find it anywhere until I found everything I learned from movies podcast with Steve and Izzy. And now I get to hear about all the monkey tickling I want, baby. So many podcasts out there are all talk and no Congo. That's why I listen to everything I learned from movies. Greatest living actor? Nicolas Cage, of course. That's why I listen to everything I learned from movies. One-liners, plot holes, gratuitous boobies? Fun fact, that's why I listen to everything I learned from movies. See if everything I learned from movies is right for you at E-I-L-F Movies. That's everything I learned from movies on Twitter, Facebook, or Patreon. Free on all the major podcatchers. Hey, Stephen Izzy, it's your old pal Mark Summers from the Nickelodeon Days, Double Dare, and many other shows. But uh, I'm here to say everything I learned from movies is unbelievable. What a great job you guys have done. Please tell me you don't feed Twinkies to the cats. And we're back. Oh my God, Steve, those are the greatest ads that have been added in the history of adding. Oh, she said it. They get better every week. Oh, that's a bomb. Babe, I don't know about you. I'm obviously a little thirsty. Oh, I am wilting in this heat. Oh, lordy. Well, from Deschutes Brewing in Bend, Oregon, we have the Black Pute Porter. Black Butt. Black Butt. <laughs> the journey began at Black Butt. 
Named for the iconic black bunt towering high above Central Oregon and seen for miles, this surprising bounce border has notes of rich chocolate and coffee, a luscious creaminess and roasted finish. No wonder it's America's favorite. 5.5% alcohol by Paul. <laughs> that sounds like the and, cherries jubilee of, um, of yeah, beer. <laughs> exactly. It's it's uh, the black butt porter is when you take cherries and put it in the big black butt of your lover. <laughs> and, oh my! And uh, with a, with a hint of uh, oh shit, uh, brunette or you know what's the what's the New Orleans liqueur everyone loves down there? The uh, it's not brunette. It's a uh, cool fuck. <laughs> no, it's uh, like Zanzibar or some stupid shit like that. But uh, Zanzibar. Oh, no. It, <laughs> God damn it. I'm looking it up. Yeah, now. It, 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 I'm looking it up it, now. Uh, Sazerac? Zazarak. That's oh, it. See, I was yeah. close. <laughs> you know, is that, is that Zazarak, the star of our movie? Sazerac. 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 <laughs> oh, Sazerac. Uh, my top? Oh, his top. Black booty, Zazerac. Oh, black booty, Sazerac. <laughs> and the poor. <laughs> This is a extremely Ooh. black beer with a uh, dark khaki colored head that seems to be lingering. <laughs> khaki head and it's lingering. Mm. Mm. Chocolatey. It smells chocolatey and you also get that uh, carbonic bite on the nose. It's oh, delightful. Wow. Yeah, this is actually a uh, fairly dry. Yeah, got a nice hot balance. Mm-hmm. I get a little bit of the piney notes or like, I guess more like roasty notes. And yeah, it's roasty and it's kind of it. dry. Yeah. Like it's very coffee like. By the way, we make a lot of jokes, but we do love the Black Butte Porter. It is delightful. We used to yeah. drink a lot of this when we could get it more conveniently. Yeah, back when back when we didn't have to go to liquor stores to get anything above 5%. Anyway. <laughs> That's living in Utah, guys. See, you, you learn to adjust a little bit. <laughs> Definitely don't drive to Evanston. But anyway, uh <laughs> Would either of you be interested in any fun facts about this movie? I don't know. Steve. Oh, absolutely. Are Give they me every fun, fun fact you have. Super fun facts, because fun, fun facts. Well, let's see what I got. All right, Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. Mike, what do you think the critics thought of Zandalee? Mm, I, I'm very curious to hear, because um, yeah, like as far as i knew this was really just like a straight to video movie so i don't even know what critics would have seen it and rated it so yeah tell me i got to know any any guesses i'm willing to bet that they i'm okay so here's my prediction they praise judge reinhold but lament nicholas cage slumming it in this cheap tawdry uh sex movie for cable I only have the percentage of how many thought it was a good movie. I don't oh, have well, that's no, reviews, I, I'm going to go 70. I'm going to go 69%. Like <laughs> nice. How about you, babe? Do critics think of this movie? They do. Yes. Although the mo- the film played theatrically in some countries, it was released direct to video in the U S due to it being panned by critics and audiences. Shit. That was a hint. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's not going to change my answer. It is going to be my super generous 17%. Izzy is closest. It is 33% with oh. the critics and 29% with the audience. There you go. Uh, yeah, no uh, no reported budget or worldwide gross because, again, straight to video. Erica Anderson, who, uh, again, played Zandali, uh, does not like to remember the filming of the most difficult sequences. Quote, if I think back to the first day of working, oh yeah, here we go. On Zandali, oh, yeah. I still get goose skin. It was the scene in which Nick Cage uh, paints my naked body. The sun and the moon on my breasts and a river that flows down between the navel. And since Cage is an actor who loves improvisation to show the domination of the male over the woman, he put in such brutality and such uh, participatory violence that I was terrified. I felt really violated. Oh, boy. Uh, we had to stop shooting and do it again the next day. Why? Uh, the rushes were pure pornography. They traumatized me. Holy shit. Mm. All right. Uh, the only other one I have is one German version of the movie was titled Love Affair, but it was the same movie. According to the May 1991 issue of Premiere Magazine, the movie was originally called Adios 
and then adios Thierry, and finally it settled on Zandali. So there you go. Those are terrible titles. <laughs> adios. Yes. All of them. No. <laughs> like, Love Affair, I don't think there was love involved. Adios, uh, they're French, though. <laughs> Bonjour, Telly! <laughs> or, <laughs> or what's the, what, what's goodbye in French? Au revoir. Au revoir. Oh, shit, yes. Au revoir, Telly! Uh, au revoir, Zandali! But, lady, gentlemen, we've reached the most important part. What did we learn from Zandali? Uh, Mike, as our guest, would you like to go first? Here's what I learned from Zandali. All right. I learned that New Orleans in 1991 was a wild place with sex clubs um, and um, exciting telecom mergers and a vibrant art scene. Um, also, I learned... Uh, that just because she's mean to you, it doesn't mean she's secretly in love with you. So you should back <laughs> off, yeah. sir. But by the way, Mike, when you guys uh, go on your romantic vacation or whatever, I'm going to introduce you to some people and you'll find those sex clubs and uh, whatever <laughs> else. It may not be in the French quarter, but they will know where they are. I mean, we were in the French Quarter when we found our weird bar. Well, yeah, but but it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, but we were with Kalisha, so. <laughs> yeah, let me put it this way. It's not where the orgy is. <laughs> it's not where the orgy is. It's true. There was not an it's, orgy. It's not where the eyes wide shut shit's going down. That's more uh, That's more in the plantation there. <laughs> uh, babe, how about you? Did you uh, learn anything from this movie? Oh, I learned that uh, Marissa Tomei and Steve Buscemi just the highlights of any film they're in. I like to think they hooked up in the. I mean, that's you know, that's what I like to think. Like, like, like after the actors like, or the characters, both, both. both. Yeah, oh, all right, fair. We didn't even need to clap. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> both. Both is good. We just love love, you know. Like, <laughs> like you know, he was he was coming out of prison. He's trying to turn his life around. She's just a a, a lady who knows a lot about cars. They. <laughs> She's not a character for my cousin Penny, Steve. <laughs> I do think Steve Buscemi's character would appreciate the Marx Brothers reference more than oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. He'd be laughing his ass off at that. He's like, my name's Steve Marx. Groucho's my cousin, or my uncle, or whatever. Like my great uncle. I don't know. <laughs> I guess Groucho's on the way out. Ninety-one. Yeah, he would appreciate her. Uh, speaking of appreciate, what I learned from this movie, uh, I learned the proper recipe for a cherry jubilee. <laughs> Babe, heads up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us here on Everything I Learned from Movies. Uh, please feel free to promote your wares once again. Is there a place I could perhaps buy things from Michael Tanner by Michael Tanner somewhere on the interwebs? No, because I got rid of that website. Oh, because Wix... Cut it, Steve jumped like they like raised their price by like 300 percent for a oh. website it was like nuts so i dropped Dude, that's why we're not on etsy anymore oh. uh, fucking etsy man oh man yeah. god damn oddly enough my we're like my dad sells a lot of stuff on etsy like not craft stuff but like antique stuff Ooh. um but he's he's doing gang butts busters on etsy he says yes. right now so good for him i think that's about the only legit thing still on etsy i just uh my art just got lumped in with ai so goodbye etsy Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, but so so yeah, please go check out Absolute Zero's Camp Launchpad uh from you know Amazon, Barnes and Noble, whichever. Also look for my other books, Orcs in Space, uh Junior Braves of the Apocalypse. Also, since uh listeners, you guys like podcasts, I don't know, some of you might like uh role-playing games. Uh, some of you might like listening to other people play a role-playing game as a podcast. I play uh the Fallout tabletop rpg on a podcast called rad rolls r-a-d-r-o-l-l-s uh check it out we're in the middle of a a fun story arc where if you know fallout i play a robo brain who's the the brain of a pre-war mobster in kansas city so yeah Ooh. come check it out if you like fallout nice and uh your timing couldn't be more perfect we just released our episodes for mazes and monsters right before yeah. oh nice <laughs> Uh, babe, are you on social media at all? 
I am. You can find me everywhere at Untidy Venus. That's a goddess who's bad at housekeeping. I'm on all the social medias and not Etsy, because fuck them at Untidy Venus. You can, uh, yeah, so yeah, check me out. You can also find me every single Saturday at 25th Street Farmer's Market here in whew, Ogden, Utah. Sorry, my asthma and my allergies started to catch me there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, come check us out at 25th Street. Uh, Steve, where are we going to be? I just pulled up the list for Jesus August. Christ. We will be at the Eccles Art Center on August 2nd, 8th, 15th, and 29th. We will be at the Weber County Fair August 7th through 10th. Uh, Ogden Pride Festival August 3rd and 4th. Uh, the Craft Lake City Do it Your uh, DIY Fest on Sunday, August 11th. Yeah, every single Saturday with the Farmer's Market. Yeah. As above, so below, Witch Fest or whatever on August 18th. And of course, oh, okay, it's going into September. But guys, we're fucking everywhere in August. Yeah. Nick August Cage, we're celebrating it the way God intended by selling Izzy's amazing art. And we're going to have a special guest, Katie Crumpton Art, for the first half of August. Yeah. Yeah, check out Katie Crumpton. Yes, come check us out. Oh, me? Oh, you can find me everywhere on all the major podcatchers and everything I learned from movies. Or hit me up directly on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Blueski at E-I-L-F Movies. That's everything I learned from movies. Uh, so yeah, I guess until next time, I'm Steve. And I'm Izzy. And I was yeah. Michael Tanner. <laughs> and this is everything I learned from movies. Have a good night, everybody. Hey, everybody.